welcome to Drinks Coach. At Drinks Coach UK, all lowercase. Or at Vinesack, um, all lowercase. Talk to me, talk to me, Jim. Right, it's Christmas. Let me know what you like in the January firm, you know. I've got lots of exciting things to show you, but, you know, maybe I'm missing out on something that you really, really want to know about. So uh, do connect and let me know uh, what you think of this drivel as it is. Uh, I've been doing it now for nearly two years. Uh, we're now on uh, episode 140, is it? Something like that. And um, I just want to do a bit of a roundup because now it's Christmas and... Uh, Although this wasn't in time for gifts, I apologise for that, but there's been a lot of um, illness around, apparently. Um, well, this is kind of like a top-up, you know, just thinking about things for New Year's Eve, and also uh, to grease a few palms of friends of mine, which who deserve a bit of a um, big up. Let's call it that. Okay, so, um, we're going to start with whiskey. Uh, my wife keeps on saying, well, we do whiskey shows. We never really explain what whiskey is. Now, if I had the time and the planning, I probably would have got some more whiskey in. I would have got a blended whiskey. So a blended whiskey is a whiskey, a regular whiskey. When you go into a shop, you buy a whiskey. It says five-year-old or a whiskey reserve. Um, the kind of like the premium kind of like um, non plus ultra blended whiskies are things like Johnny Walker Black Label or Shivers Regal 12-year-old. They're really, really good stuff. Okay, But um, you can also get basic common or garden whiskies in supermarkets i would i would strongly recommend you try the waitrose five-year-old which i think was made by scotch leader back in my day or burn stewart's but they're good whiskey producers nonetheless um and you get proper whiskey now what's the difference between blended whiskey and other kinds of whiskey well blended doesn't mean it's been blended from other whiskies as much as it's been blended from other grains it usually has a proportion of malt, which is expensive, but malt is kind of like the kingpin of all the grains for making whiskey. It's the one that ages best, etc. Uh, but then you mix it with other grains. So it could be wheat, it could be rye, it could be whatever. Um, so grain whiskey is considered less fancy. It's less, fa let, let, God, let's face it, it's less fancy. It's less sophisticated, less complex. It's certainly in the style of a Scottish malt whiskey, um, we are talking about kind of like, like Bordeaux, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, drinks that age, that have more sophistication, that require more conditioning and affinage and time in barrel, um, which is the reason why our friend, Mr. David Beckham, has bought Hague, which is a grain whiskey, because his ingredients are super cheap, um, but he actually makes a half-decent whiskey out of it, so I'm not going to break his balls too much. Let's see what I did there. Okay, so what we've got here is um, uh, some whiskies which I had knocking around the house. Uh, my wife said I should explain to you what they are. Okay, so we're going to finish on this one, uh, which you may have seen before if you're following me and you follow my love for whiskey. Um, but what we're going to do first is try these three. Now, this was on the show uh, last week, I think, at the beginning of the week, when I raved about some stuff in Tesco saying how good... Uh, some of the peripheral stuff at Tesco's is, you know, it's one thing to be raving about how good their wines are, but how good is their dessert wine? How good are their sherry range? How good is their whiskey and their cognac range? Well, the cognac's lovely. Been drinking that today. <laughs> um, this is their Highland whiskey. I'm just going to give them another big up because it so deserves it. Um, it says here that it was actually made by David Semple. Uh, can't, oh, it's a bit flare out there. David, there you go. I tell you what. Oh, it's 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 probably because of the actual flare on the camera. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Technical issues. Anyway, so here we are. A twelve-year-old Highland malt. Um, he is responsible for making the whiskies for Grants, uh, which is um, special because Grants make great whiskey, but also one of their great, superb. One of the great Highland whiskies is Dalmore, and he's responsible for Dalmore. If you watched uh, Kingsman. I know there's a new Kingsman film out. It starts off with this whole scene where people are trying to stop spilling this rather fancy glass of whiskey. Yeah, and that's Dalmore 62. And I love the idea they picked that. A Dalmore 62 in modern money is like 29 grand a bottle, just so you know. Um, and this is 23 pounds. So if it is from the same mistake, I think we're doing rather well, aren't we? Okay, so here we are. A little whiskey. It's a Highland. Um, in the Highland, there's a there's a 
river called the Spey, which is pretty famous for its water and for its whiskey production. And that's kind of like the Bordeaux of France. Suddenly, lots of people make whiskey there because of what it does. And we have uh, two wonderful whiskies here, which we're about to talk about. Um, one's a Highland, one's a Spey. Uh, but we're also uh, drinking a Highland whiskey here. Um, right, so, smells. Floral, but then Christmas cake. Raisins. Sort of, yeah, kind of almost Dundee cake, kind of rich. Wonderful nutty, almost hazelnut toast on the finish. Um, that's just an awful lot of whiskey for 23 quid. That's five pounds cheaper uh, than Jack Daniels. So either rock out or be sophisticated. Up to you. Okay, so that's number one. Number two. Now, those people who know the industry will know these two are actually from the same place. And they'll also know that Johnny Hunter, ex Pernarica, ex Gorilla Spirits, ex The One Gin, one of the nicest guys in the whole wide world, um, um, he's now responsible for the marketing of such whiskies. And um, he sent me these two uh, <coughs> a little while ago. And I'm really glad that I managed to kind of just like kind of sit on my hands and not drink these two um, in time for a, a, a special shout out to both Johnny Hunter and Glen Goyne and Tamdu, which are two fantastic whiskies which I've not featured on this show before. So why the heck not now? Okay, so I'm gonna get two, these are called Glen Cairn glasses. Ooh, very posh whiskey glasses. Okay, now we're gonna try this one. This is Glen Goyne, 12 year old. The packaging's changed quite a lot since I remember it when I was a youngster. Um, 12 years is old means that the whiskey in it is always 12 years old or more. It's not some average or anything like that. It's genuine that the stuff in here is 12 years old plus. So there'll be a smidge of some 20 or 30 year old stuff in there as well. But what I want to make uh, clear about this is this is, um, I remember certainly in the 80s there was an argument they said well, this just shouldn't, be, should, shouldn't be made because it's not in the appropriate style of a Highland whiskey. Um, they've been making whiskey since um, the really, you know, pre-Victorian times, um, 1837, I think, was they found it. And uh, this whiskey has the kind of, I don't know, where, I don't know if it's a badge of honour, um, but it has the idiosyncrasy that it is a whiskey that does not use any peat in the wheat whiskey process. There's no peat used to smoke or heat the barley or germinate the barley. They haven't used peat to fire the pot kilns. They just use gas. So this is the only unpeated Scottish whiskey malt, apparently. Now this is not 100% malt, okay? And um, the, the point I'm trying to make is, whiskey doesn't have to be peated to be sexy, okay? Right now, you might be a big Lagavulin fan, a big Brooklady fan, you could be all those things. Oh, there is another whiskey I need to find. Uh, for us to taste momentarily. Um, but anyway, this is um, a very, very fine whiskey indeed. I just want to talk about it a little bit. And it reminds me of a whiskey which I almost think must be following in its footsteps in a way. Um, it's a whiskey which is very, very fine. Won many, many awards very recently. It's only been around for about 12 years itself. Um, but I kind of have a feeling that it's kind of, they must have tried Glen Goyne and gone, there's, uh, there's something, something to be said about non smoky, non-peaty, non-iodine whiskey. And that is the distillery of Kavalan. And Kavalan is in Taiwan. Taiwan makes very, very, very good whiskey. Or if Kavalan was the only distillery in Taiwan, then it would it would be world, world class. And I'm a massive, massive fan of, of uh, Kavalan's whiskey output. Um, and even um, some of the finest Scottish um, writers about whiskey have given Kavalan the status of world's greatest distillery and so forth. And uh, uh, you just have to try it. Um, Cavalan Podium, which is using new oak, which is really brash, big out there, pineapple exotic whiskey, um, is one of the finest whiskies, new discoveries for me in the last five to 10 years. It's about 80 quid, 90 quid. It's only gonna go up in price, as most of the others have. But the point is they're making a malt whiskey with no peat at all. And, and in Japan, where they really revere Scottish whiskey. In fact, they make some really m mental whiskies in Japan, which are now very expensive. They were importing 
um, peated whiskies in Scotland to blend with their own because they thought that was an essential part of being taken seriously. Well, here's proof that's not the case. The nose. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what? Since my 18th birthday, if I'd smelt this in the lineup, I would know exactly what it is. Does that sound weird? Well, I've got an eidetic memory for smell, but... <laughs> There's a smell there. It reminds me of a Chelsea boot. I don't know why, but I had a pair of really expensive Chelsea boots, like Churches, when I was a kid. I saved up for years for them so that I could um, hang out with the big boys at my posh public school, although my parents weren't as wealthy as they were. And uh, I had this beautiful pair of shoes which I polished and polished and polished. And there was this smell of sweet leather, faint boot polish. Not in a bad way. Smell of orange oil. Really strong orange oil. And underneath there's these layers of currants, digestive biscuits. It's a very warm, comforting drink. But this... Ladies and gentlemen, despite the fact that it's the the outlier, the outrigger of most all of Scottish whisky, is your full strength 43% by volume release, 12 year old, brilliant, age verified, unfiltered whisky. Johnny, how was that? Did I describe that properly? I think that's absolutely delicious, man. It's just so good. Let's uh, pop into Spay, shall we? This is a Spay side. <laughs> Barely. But it doesn't mean that Emma can drink the rest of it. Johnny, she drank it all. Well, what can I say? Um, <laughs> um, this has um, been around for a little less long. It's been around for about 120, 130 years. And this has... There, there are some characteristics of Speyside whiskies. A lot of Speyside whiskies are really down to how they're made because you can make much more powerful spirits. Um, things like the Macallan, the world's most famous, world's most expensive whiskey. Um... Uh, that's a classic example of what we're talking about, is um, a whiskey which has lots of sherry, lots of vanilla. <coughs> this is Tamdu. These two whiskies are going to be in the mid 40 quids. I think it's about 42. It's about pushing 50 quid probably. <coughs> but when I smell spay, I don't know what it is about the water, but the spay sides have this heather lift, this lift of smell, which kind of separates them um, from all other Scottish whiskey. Um, there are different elegant feminine styles of whiskey but one thing about Speyside is <coughs> they can handle a lot of different oak finishes they can handle lots of sherry lots of bourbon all that sort of those flavor because the flavor penetrates through but there's different ways of being elegant tamdu is elegant like a racehorse it's proportioned it's but it's muscular <coughs> when you talk about elegant Speyside we're not talking about a nice frock we're talking about somebody who has great grace and athleticism and this has this wonderful profound you try and pick up the smell on the nose but you go deeper and deeper into the tunnel until the bottom you find um again some slight burnt citrus smell of spanish root there's a lovely wonderful licorice note i always get with tamdu um and then there's a smell of cereal, like Cranachan, like the best dessert in the world, which is basically whiskey and cream and biscuits, basically. Um, but you've got this wonderful digestive note. Hmm. What can I say? Absolutely fantastic whiskey. OK, let's move this along. It's been 14 minutes. We've done three drinks. So this is... Um, I was going to talk about this whiskey. Uh, let's use this one. I don't know if you can see that written there. It says corked. Yes, spirits can be corked too. This is my bottle, my delicious bottle of Scalaseg Island Hopper, which I'll talk about in a minute. And it's fucked. If you smell, if you buy a £50 whiskey and it's like undrinkable, then write a letter or send an email to Master of Malt or Whiskey so say, is it possible this is undrinkable? Is there something wrong with it? Because they usually be kind to you and, and, and say, well, from time to time you get corked spirits. This is corked exactly the same way a wine is corked. But there's kind of a, a tipping point with spirits. If you have a corked brandy or a corked whiskey, it is 20 times worse than even corked wine. It's unpalatable. It's bitter. It's horrible. You can't even cook with it. I couldn't even flambe Christmas pudding with this. So very sadly... I ran out, so um, 
some of the Lone Samoria. I'm going to put the empty bottle there. Scalisake, what is this? Well, I've mentioned this twice before. It's been two years since I started this show and I've been doing updates on my favourite whisky and I'm yet to find a more satisfying, delicious, balanced, exciting, Scottish whisky with identity and flair than this little fella. Um, a couple of guys left the Edrington group, which is uh, the Macallan and amongst other very, very fine spirits around the world. And they bought some whiskey from different islands around <coughs> the western coast of, of, of Scotland. So um, Scalisake is actually a town on the small island of Collinsay, um, Dan Jago. I know you're a massive fan. I think you have a hotel there or something, I'm not sure. But um, this is called Island Hopper, which is a little skiff, like a kind of a sloop of an island. And it also says Maiden Voyage, because this is the first ever mix, first ever blend. And I've got to tell you, it's still available. You can still buy this from Master of Malt. You can still buy this. And it's about £50. It's forty nine ninety five. It doesn't have an age, de age de designation. Um, and also, it's not a single malt. It's made from five or six different malts from different islands, which all have a crossover of flavours, but make this incredibly orchestral, delicious whisky with very, very deep sherry, which is quite rare for this style. Most peated whiskies tend to be quite pale, like Ardberg, Petit Vake. They tend to be really kind of white and beautiful and, and briny and very precise, but really smoky. Um, I quite like heavily sherried island flavours. Um, I don't know the islands are in, the, the, the particular whiskies are in here. But the point here is this is not a blended whisky. Just going back to my wife telling me to do this show. We've got blended whisky, which is a blend of different cereals, different base elements. Then we've got single malts. And then this is a blend of different malt whiskies. So what do we call it? A vatted malt. This is a vatted malt. And this is the Scalaseg. And honestly, um, it might be January the 2nd. Trust me, you're going to need the bottle of whiskey. Go and bloody buy it. Um, just make actually I'm going to put an order in quickly I just want one more bottle before it runs out but they only made like four or five thousand bottles and I can't believe it's still available um, truly magnificent only three thousand bottles made jeez is nobody listening to me do I have no influence whatsoever drink it amazing okay so that's our whiskey lineup that's my wife's complaint sorted so now we've got these three Here we go. Jinbei. Fauzi Issa. Do you remember I did a show? You should remember if you're a real fan. I did a show about Lebanese wine, which was wonderful. And a guy called Joe Assad, Joe Assad Tuma, sent me some wines all the way from Lebanon to try and reach out and say, look, we're, we're struggling. After that gigantic explosion back in August, um, they're really struggling with even getting... Um, shipments in, enough food for the country and they're certainly struggling with getting things out and just in a terrible place and they're such a, 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 an innovative and, and um, creative uh, group of people, the Lebanese um, they always find a way and they always know how to make money and they, they work hard until they do and they're very stylish and um, Fauzi um, is the current kind of protectorate the curator of a, a family industry that goes back back to i think the early 19th late 19th century um where they produced an awful lot of wine but the wine was used to make arak which is a spirit a distant spirit which then had star anise and aniseed added to it to make this wonderful drink the, the greeks call it chiporo and actually and the turkish call it raki um, but it's a very Middle Eastern thing, playing backgammon, smoking a shisha pipe and drinking this stuff. Um, but it's wonderful. And it's it, actually drinking it watered down with a couple of kebabs. It just works. He's brought out a gin. So, look, he's from the Lebanon. So cut him some slack, please. But he's also a bit of a genius, Fauzi. And ladies out there, <laughs> he's pretty handsome too. OK, so this is Jin Bay. And Jin Bay is the Lebrun or the Domaine de Tourelle's own gin. It's been brought in by a company called Boutineau. It's sold in lots of different independent stores. Look it up online, but it's Gin Bay, and it's made from 
botanicals unique to Lebanon, to the Bekaa Valley, which are wonderful and dry. Yeah, very similar in some ways to the dry areas of South Africa. You've got this kind of fame boss dried sage thing going on. But it's a wonderful, wonderful whiskey. Um, I don't think it's crazy money either. I think it might even be sub £30 or it's mid-30s. But it's it's the same price as other premium gins. But if you're trying to find another gin for your collection or you have a gin club where you like to put it out and see if anybody can recognise it, they won't recognise this because this is the new kid on the block. This is hot off the plane on a boat. Um, but I would say, though, is that his Arak is to die for and his wines are amongst, if not the best wines in Lebanon. Oh, Chateau Mouzard. Who are they? These wines are incredible. He makes incredible syrup. Okay, Fauzi, enough about you. Now moving on to two drinks, both brought in by a dear friend of mine who was responsible for, for in some ways, my, my increased love of Gonzalez Bias Sherry. You know, Boris Ivan, touch me. And Melissa, a big, big fan. And um, Jeremy Rocket moved on to other things. And this is... A bit of a shout out to Jeremy to say thank you very much for being so generous with his time and his samples. But my father, who passed away about three or four years ago, he um, used to love going to his uh, my godfather, or my brother's godfather actually, um, Paul Borison's club, all-inclusive club out in Barbados called Haywards. And um, he always come, came back with a bottle of uh, 100, 151 proof white rum from Coxpur. Now, Coxpur is a Bayesian rum, often forgotten, maybe not as fine as some of the others, but hell, it is absolutely classic to type. It is such a classic Bayesian rum in its style. It's not Jamaican, but it does have esters. It's not Cuban, but it has florality. It's a really wonderful middle of the line, please everyone kind of rum. And their white rum makes the makes killer daiquiris. I think they make brilliant daiquiris. They make a golden rum and a white rum. And this one is their very much fancier old gold, which is a bit older. And this is, as I understand, it's quite natural colour, which is wonderful. But this is a four or five year old rum, which is absolutely delicious. Um, so, um, yeah, check this out. This is back on the market, or it's new. It's coming into the UK again. Um, Coxpur, the last time I had any time with them, uh, it turns out Coxpur sponsor the English cricket Barmy Army. So uh, maybe they're just giving the cricket team too much to drink because we're not doing terribly well down under right now. Uh, but Coxburgh's been around since 1881. Yeah, palindrome, 1881. It's such a lovely rum. But it's Bayesian. It tastes like... OK, another great rum. It's like Mount Gay. But it's not like Mount Gay. It has its own characteristic. But Coxburgh Old Gold, very much like a Mount Gay aged XO style very very fine indeed and then coming on to this I always like to have one dirty slaggy shot for Christmas and this will work just as well in coffee or hot chocolate in a, in a, in a hot toddy but it says in wonderful big embossments at the top Ireland and Jamie Rocket <laughs> yeah I think there might be some Irish in him Shanky's whip Shanky's whip made in Ireland and it's a guy on a, on a on a trotter on a race wheel uh, being pulled along um, by an ostrich. Um, it's it's a bit bonkers to be honest. Um, but this is um, a liqueur made from uh, Irish spirit, Irish whiskey, cream, caramel. I know it's almost like it's almost like Bailey's, but twice as strong, but without the the goop. Okay. It's quite stunning. I thought it absolutely delicious. Last year, I really raved about a drink called Black Fire. And Black Fire is still deep in my heart. Wonderful drink, which tastes like this with chilli added to it. But this may just have it on the level of finesse of caramel and everything. What I'd love to do is get a pint of Guinness, a pint of old school Liffey water, and do a depth charge of this into the drink. Must come up with a name for that. Oh God, so delicious. So if you're fed up with people telling you that Bailey's is too weak, drink this, it's 33%. Shanky's Whip, Joe Wadsack's 2021 Shot of the Year. Thank you very much. See you next time. Mm -hmm.